Alaska is often imagined as a frozen wilderness of glaciers, caribou, and rugged survival. But beneath the snow and ice lies an even older story. Who were the first people to set foot on this land? For decades, scientists pointed to Beringia and a single migration over the land bridge. But what if that's not the full story? What if ancient DNA tells us that multiple groups, some with very different origins, arrived here earlier than we thought? Before we start, I'm on a road to get 1,000 subscribers as a small channel. If you want to help me, please subscribe. Alaska stretches across over 600,000 square miles, encompassing Arctic tundra, boreal forests, glacial valleys, and a vast network of rivers and coastlines. It stands as the ancient gateway to the Americas, bridging the continents via what was once Beringia, a vast, now submerged landmass that connected Siberia and Alaska during the last ice age. For much of the 20th century, scientists believed the first humans to reach Alaska did so by crossing this land bridge around 13,000 to 15,000 years ago. These early settlers, often referred to as Paleo-Indians, were thought to have followed migrating game through an ice-free corridor before spreading across the continent. Archaeological finds like spear points and stone tools supported this inland migration model. Indigenous groups such as the Athabascans and Inuit were seen as their direct descendants, but the traditional story assumed a single wave of migration and a straightforward path, an assumption now being challenged by new genetic discoveries that paint a far more complex picture. As researchers examined ancient sites across Alaska and northwest Canada, cracks began to form in the standard narrative. At Bluefish Caves in the Yukon and Old Crow River, bone tools and butchered animal remains were dated to over 24,000 years ago, thousands of years before the ice-free corridor opened. Coastal sites like Onyonee's Cave in southeast Alaska revealed early human remains with marine-based diets and tool types that didn't match those found in land. Genetic studies of modern indigenous groups also uncovered deep splits between coastal populations and interior groups like the Athabascans suggesting ancient separation rather than a single unified migration. Even linguistic differences pointed to varied origins. These anomalies couldn't be easily explained by the classic land bridge model. Was it possible that Alaska was reached by more than one route? And more importantly, could ancient DNA finally offer a way to trace these different ancestral streams back to their source? To test these theories, scientists turned to ancient DNA extracting genetic material from human remains preserved in Alaska's permafrost and cave systems. Some of the samples came from burials as old as 11,500 years, while others were recovered from sediment layers in coastal rock shelters dating back over 14,000 years. Researchers focused on teeth and petrous bones, the densest parts of the skeleton most likely to retain intact DNA. They used hybridization capture techniques to target over a million single nucleotide polymorphisms, SNPs, across the genome and sequenced full mitochondrial and Y-chromosome DNA. These ancient genomes were then compared with both modern indigenous populations and other ancient individuals from Siberia, Beringia and coastal North and South America. Radiocarbon dating ensured the remains spanned a wide time range. By layering genetic data with geographic and archaeological context, scientists aim to reconstruct the ancestral origins of Alaska's earliest inhabitants and determine whether they truly came from one source or several. When the genetic data came back, the results were striking. The earliest individuals from coastal Alaska showed ancestry patterns different from those found in the interior. Some shared close genetic ties with ancient Siberian populations known as the ancient North Siberians, while others carried markers linking them to a coastal migration group, distinct from the inland Beringians traditionally credited with populating North America. These coastal genomes resembled those of individuals found further south along the Pacific coast, including ancient remains from Washington, California, and even as far as Chile. Meanwhile, inland groups in central and northern Alaska carried DNA more closely aligned with classic Beringian ancestry, suggesting they followed a separate migration route through the interior. The conclusion, Alaska was settled by at least two distinct population streams, one moving overland through the ice-free corridor and another traveling by sea along the Pacific coast. These groups remained genetically distinct for centuries before eventually intermixing in later periods. The new evidence supports a dual-path model for the peopling of Alaska. One group, the inland Beringians, 
migrated south through the ice-free corridor around 14,000 years ago, following herds of megafauna across tundra and taiga. The other, perhaps even earlier, travelled by boat along the Pacific coastline, navigating kelp forests and sheltered bays. This coastal wave may have reached southeast Alaska as early as 16,000 years ago, hugging the shoreline and exploiting marine resources like fish, seals and shellfish. Their descendants left subtle traces, bone harpoons, middens filled with sea life, and now their DNA in ancient burials. These two groups likely remained apart for generations separated by geography, language and lifestyle. Over time, as glaciers retreated and travel became easier, they began to merge genetically and culturally into the diverse indigenous populations that eventually spread across Alaska and beyond. This revised model helps explain the patchwork of traditions, languages and genes that characterize Alaska's human history. For much of early Alaskan prehistory, the coastal and inland populations maintained clear cultural and genetic boundaries. Archaeological evidence shows differences in toolkits. Coastal groups favoured slate blades, fish hooks, and bone needles, while inland peoples relied more on flaked stone projectile points and terrestrial hunting gear. Dietary isotopes from ancient teeth confirm this divide, with coastal individuals consuming more marine proteins and inland groups relying on land animals. Burial styles also varied, and early DNA shows little admixture between the two. These distinctions suggest that the first Alaskans were not one people, but at least two, each adapting uniquely to their environment. The genetic signatures in Alaska's ancient populations reveal even more about their divergent roots. Early coastal individuals carried mitochondrial haplogroups like A2A1 and D4H3A, rare lineages more common among early seafaring populations along the Pacific Rim. Their Y-DNA showed patterns like Q1AMA2, distinct from later groups. In contrast, interior populations bore mtDNA haplogroups such as C1B and D2A and Y-chromosome markers like Q1B, which would later dominate among Athabascans and Inuit. These contrasting lineages further support the idea of separate founding populations. Over time, these lines would blend, but their distinct origins still echo in the genes of Alaska's modern indigenous peoples. The ancient DNA findings are transforming how we understand the human story in Alaska. Rather than a single migration over a land bridge, the peopling of this vast region appears to be the result of multiple waves arriving by land and sea, each bringing its own ancestry, technology and culture. These early groups didn't just pass through, they stayed, thrived and shaped the land for generations. The distinct genetic and archaeological signatures of coastal and inland populations show that Alaska was a crossroads of human movement far earlier and more complex than previously believed. Their eventual mingling gave rise to the region's diverse indigenous cultures, from the marine-adapted Tlingit and Aleut to the inland Athabascans. This revised prehistory tells us that the Arctic was not a remote, isolated fringe, but a dynamic zone of innovation, adaptation and encounter. The ancient peoples of Alaska weren't who we thought, and their legacy is only beginning to be understood. While the current findings have opened a new chapter in Alaskan archaeology, Many questions remain. Researchers hope to extract more ancient DNA from the Aleutian chain, Arctic river valleys, and submerged coastal sites that once lay along the Ice Age shoreline. Combining genetic data with isotope studies, stone tool analysis, and oceanographic models could help pinpoint the exact timing and direction of these ancient migrations. Were there even earlier groups that left no known descendants? Did some migrate back toward Asia? As climate change thaws permafrost and reveals new sites, the next decade promises to bring even more revelations. The story of Alaska's first inhabitants is no longer a simple tale of one group crossing a land bridge. It's a rich mosaic of migrations from seafarers navigating icy coasts to hunters trekking inland tundra. Ancient DNA is reshaping our understanding of where we came from and who was here first. It reminds us that history is always more layered than we think. What other surprises lie buried beneath the ice or sealed in the bones of the past? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this journey into ancient genetics, don't forget to like and subscribe.